Welcome back to another episode of the Mind If I Crash podcast. I'm your host, Tristan Taliano, and today we're going to be talking about quite a few different things because it's been a little while since I've talked to you last. We got a ton we're going to cover, so let's get into today's episode. So I'm sure you're all wondering, like every episode, I'm going to be honest, this has been the longest, and I don't have to be honest, you already know, this has been the longest season of Mind If I Crash ever. We're like three seasons in struggling to finish this third. It's, it's insane. So, I do want to say a few things. First off, this episode is sponsored by our proud sponsor, Gorilla Pack. Use code MIIC20 for 20% off at checkout. Great product, great people. You're going to love it if you guys are gym heads. Go check them out. Getting into things. Guys, it's going to be a short and sweet episode because it's just me today, but it's been too long. I was at the casino last night with some friends and they kind of roasted me. So I had to go out for like a work thing and we went to the Toledo Casino. It's like two hours away, an hour and 40 minutes, deep drive. And uh, we got there and in typical Tristan fashion, uh, did terrible until I got on the roulette table. It's the only time I'm good and uh, that doesn't say much. So had a good time, lost money for sure. And when we sat down to have dinner, uh, one of my buddies leaned in and was like, hey, man, like, when are we going to get another podcast? So I didn't realize he doesn't follow the YouTube channel, which if you guys are only listening to this on streaming services, I would strongly advise you to check out some of the content that we create on the YouTube channel because we've really stayed consistent on posting other videos uh, that aren't based on the podcast. So you know, obviously it's like been like two months since you guys got in a podcast episode. So we're going to start dropping these a little bit more frequent, or at least I'm going to try to. And I'm sure you're like, yeah, right, whatever. Um, but the YouTube channel has definitely stayed fairly consistent, doing reviews, doing vlogs, different things like that, having a lot of fun. And it's exciting to announce that I just got a Canon. So I guess the use for two iPhones is no longer needed but still going to continue to happen because at this point, people just assume and understand that mind if I crash, dude's got two phones. That really kicked this off in a viral way. So uh, yeah, two phones stay in more episodes of the podcast coming. Um, but speaking of the casino, you know, I, I was very adamant on trying to go to Cleveland when we made these plans. And it's because it's all I know. Outside of Las Vegas, the Cleveland Casino is all I know and understand. Going to the Jack is, I wouldn't say it's necessarily fun, but if you you don't know any better, you don't know any better. All those guys are from like the Sandusky, Huron area. So Toledo is where they go. And they're like, no, I promise you, this is going to be a better spot. And, you know, I'm trying to compare things, right? Like Cleveland, the city, better than Toledo. If you're from Toledo, don't take offense to that. I'm not trying to start another war in my state. But, um, you know, I just feel like Cleveland is a little bit probably nicer and, and better. And they said, no, it's just not the case. So we got there, and to my surprise, it was a very fun experience. So if you've never been to the Toledo Casino, I think it's called Hollywood Casino. Uh, go check that out. You guys definitely have a good time there. Uh, if you enjoy gambling, you have fun. If you don't, don't go. I don't really enjoy it. I'm going to be honest. I don't enjoy gambling as much as most people do, especially at my age, but it is what it is. I don't have the patience to understand some of the card games, and I don't really enjoy parting with money enough to take the risk to win more. So it is what it is, guys. Uh, There was a good few fights the last night, though, on the UFC side. I'm not going to bore you with that. I know most of you guys don't want to hear that UFC fighting bullshit. Uh, The only thing I will touch on in that regard, though, is there is huge talk of like a crossbreed fight going on right now. And that is what it seems to be would be the headline of Francis Ngannou versus Tyson Fury. Francis Ngannou, heavyweight champion in the UFC. Tyson Fury, uh, multiple heavyweight champion in the, the boxing world. So. Uh, That would be an amazing fight. I really want to know what you guys think. In my opinion, I would really need to see the rules before I speak on who could potentially win that fight. If if there's any kicking involved, I would assume Francis would likely win that fight. If there is any grappling involved, I would assume Francis would likely win that fight. My opinions, my theory on the, the situation at whole 
is likely going to be it's predominantly stand up with maybe more of like a clinch allowed where you can get into a clinch and hold because typically in boxing they'll break that up. So maybe a little bit of like dirty boxing. I'm, I'm not too sure. I really want to see like what those rules and regulations are going to be before I predict a winner in, in situations like that. But um, if, you know, if Jake Paul's ever going to sneak into uh, the, the UFC for real, I'm assuming it would be on that card. And, um, you know, Dana White's been on the Impulsive podcast. He's talked about, you know, kind of entertaining the idea with either of the Paul brothers. And Dana said on the show that he would likely have a better shot of letting Logan into the UFC because of Logan's high level, not even necessarily high level. He was a state, maybe a state champ, state qualifier here in the state of Ohio, but um, because of his full rounded combat sports experience than Jake's, you know, I think Jake did wrestle. I don't think he was that great compared to Logan, but um, it is what it is. Uh, Logan Paul, WrestleMania, huge. That was amazing. Um, it, whether you love or hate Logan Paul, that was a super cool experience. A kid from Westlake, Ohio was able to, uh, th- just through people liking him or hating him, make it onto one of the biggest, I don't even know what you would call, I mean, the WrestleMania is like the, the Matt Gala of wrestling for wrestling fans. It's the biggest event of the year, so... Uh, super cool experience, but yeah, guys, let me know what you think about the, uh, hybrid crossbred, crossbred, the hybrid fight between potential UFC or combat sports artists versus boxers and what that might be super excited to hear guys. We're going to take a quick break and we'll get right back into it. You know what though, while we're on the topic of fighting, I have been fighting for my life to get away from these thirsty women lately. Guys, it does not matter where I'm at or what I'm doing. I am constantly being hit on by women. I'm going to be honest. I never in my life would have prepared at 26, 25, 26 years. How old am I? I'm 26. Yes, I was born in 1996. I'm 26. Damn, I've been telling people I was 25. That's fucked up. Uh, wow, never mind. Um, but no one would have prepared me at 26 years old to be getting hit on left and right by women. I posted a TikTok last weekend making fun of 50-year-olds. I have 50-year-olds in my inbox saying reckless shit right now. It's, yo, like you're older than my mother. What are we talking about here? It's, it's insane right now. Um, I, go, I go to work and like clients are like taking pictures of me. I like was at, the, at Velvet Dog and this lady would like snuck her camera around like this and like acted like she was taking a selfie and drunk people just doing drunk things. They don't realize they're not being sneaky and like took a picture of me standing behind her, like keeping guard and like looked at the camera and I was like, what's going on here? She's like, oh, I'm sending it to my friend to see if she knows you. And I'm like, why would your friend know me? Why? Explain that to me. Why would your friend know who I am? A random security guard in Cleveland. Just, just going to know me? It's not going to happen. Const- I, I go live on TikTok. I got people in the DM talking about, hey, daddy. First off, how do you know I'm a father? It, it's insane. Anywhere I go, I am just ah getting attacked. And, uh, it's cool. It certainly is cool. It's certainly flattering. However, I just didn't expect it at 26 years old to, to be getting it so constantly. Why couldn't this have happened at 18? I would have felt like the man at 18. Not to mention, I was so much better looking at 18. I, I, it, it blows me away. Um, I am going to just embrace the moment and take it in. But guys, have you noticed this at 26? Uh, in your mid-20s, let's just say mid-20s, have you noticed that you're being approached more? And typically, we're the ones that are used to being the ones who approach, and I'm terrible at that. I won Biggest Flirt in high school. Still don't know how I won that. I think, re- realistically, I think it was because I knew how to speak to people And because of that, people just assumed that I was flirting because I knew how to have a conversation and carry a conversation. However, uh, my my flirtatious game is trash. 
an 18 year old me would honestly be upset if he saw me today the way these women approach me and me have nothing to say in return he would be super pissed like damn bro you really didn't up your game at all and i'd be like nah no i didn't and i don't know how so it is what it is i'm here for the moment i'll continue to embrace it but i got nothing for you ladies i got nothing it doesn't mean that I wouldn't be interested. I want to be clear on that. I do not know how to communicate on a romantic level. It's not going to happen. It probably never has. You know, I will treat you the same way I'll treat anyone else. And that always gets me in trouble too. That always gets me in trouble because I treat every single person pretty much the same way. Uh, whether you're my mom, my girlfriend, my brother, my daughter, I talk to you all the same way. And maybe not my daughter, because I baby the shit out of her. But I talk to pretty much every person the same way. I talk to people in public, the pe strangers. I, it's all the same way. I try to find ways to relate and then build off of that. Just building rapport with anyone I meet. And it causes some friction sometimes if I'm in a relationship, because they will think that I am essentially flirting with that person. No, I'm not flirting with the greeter at Walmart. That's why. Why would I? Fucking insanity. But I understand it. I'm trying to reflect on it and build from there. So, um, well, yeah, just taking it day by day right now. Um, guys, let's keep moving on. Uh, a few things I'm going to rant about today, but um, that's going to come here in just a moment. The Nelk Boys have been receiving a lot of attention lately. And as you know, I love and adore the Nelk Boys, the Full Send line. Absolutely everything that they do always turns to gold. As of lately, though, they've been receiving some probably unwanted attention on a few different things. Their Full Send podcast, an episode was taken down featuring the last president, uh, Donald Trump. And it was wild because you feel like you should have the ability to, to practice free speech amongst most of these platforms. However, there are certain things that they do not want you talking about. And what took place in the accusations that Mr. Trump had made due to the um, election were really not wanted. So they removed the episode and stuck by their guns on that. YouTube did. And it uh, opened up the eyes of a few different content creators in both good and bad ways and in support and uh, being against YouTube as well. So I'm um, very curious to see what that does. And honestly, I think we've already seen what that can bring from people in the world because Elon Musk, due to uh, disliking the censorship of Twitter, decided to buy Twitter. And I've seen this before. I've said it probably before, and I'll continue saying it. Someone had once tweeted that Elon Musk is the real-life version of Tony Stark, and I could not agree more. He does baller shit. Um, if anyone controlled the simulation, it likely would be him, and that's why he's talking about it so much. He's probably giving us clues. Wake up from the simulation. I don't really believe that, guys. I want you to know I've been... Uh, I've been talking on simulations lately, and I start to think that my friends probably believe I'm a conspiracy theorist when it comes to that. I'm not, but the concept is pretty cool. Um, let's talk about that, though. Elon Musk pulls his dick out on the table and buys Twitter. First starts by buying the largest sharehold um, of any person uh, on Twitter realizes that he won't be able to just solve the problem by that, uh, to denies a board seat, and says, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to buy the whole damn thing. And literally bought Twitter for like $44 billion or $49 billion. I'll pop up the accurate number on the screen. Baller move. That is some next level shit right there. I, I couldn't even wrap my head around it, but also I understand that like, I don't use Twitter a whole lot anymore. I used to be big on Twitter. When it first came out, for like five years straight, I was on Twitter heavy. I was tweeting literally everything. Um, filming a podcast. Hashtag. Uh, follow for follow type shit. You know, like I was just tweeting whatever I was doing in that time. And as I've grown up, I just don't have it in me to like check in with Twitter. It's basically just checking in with people. This, this, this. I'm doing this, this, and this. Cool. 
share a random thought of the day, random song of the day, random art find of the day. Twitter is very cool for those reasons. I just don't have it in me to use it. I got too much other stuff going on. However, I understand that there are people and their mind works similar to a Twitter timeline. So they you like those quick doses, scroll through, keep it moving. For me, TikTok is my life right now. I truly enjoy it. Uh, and I'm assuming that if there were restrictions on TikTok the way there were in, in, in Twitter, then there likely would be a similar action made. Probably not by Elon. I don't really take him for someone who enjoys or cares too much about TikTok. Um, but I do enjoy that people are kind of taking a hold of this free speech thing and really running with it. I think regardless of like politically where you stand, there can be benefit to, to promoting free speech on the internet. Obviously, that has to fall in line with all like legal views and, and legal laws, but um, being able to speak how you feel regardless of you know, any, any filters set up um, by the, the social media companies is kind of a nice thing, regardless of where you're at. I'm not going to get too into it because I don't want people claiming on one side or the other. Um, however, you know, I think it can, can do a lot of good. So let me know what you guys think about that. And, um, you know, where were we even started? I think we were talking about the Nelk boys back on them. Another thing that they had going recently, the, the biggest member of the Nelk boys outside of Kyle Forgeard is Steve will do it. And if you don't know who Steve will do it is, he has become very popular and very famous in the UFC due to him being the main person to throw the shoe to tie to Ivasa, who then drinks alcohol from said shoe on top of the cage. Steve has found himself in some trouble recently due to befriending Takashi 69. And if you don't know Steve will do it, then you wouldn't know that Takashi 69 is a totally different person when he's on Steve's channel. He is not in character, he's not a troll, he's not a bad person. However, he started releasing music after an almost a year break and has gone full-blown back into 6 9 mode. It's a real, like, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde situation here. And he drags Steve Will Do It into some rap drama that, uh, that really got, it caused major backlash that I don't think anyone really saw coming. However, he's been forced to cut off 6 9 To give you a little bit of detail what's going on with that situation, uh, Lil Durk, who's a Chicago rapper, had a big group that he came out with 10 years ago. Chief Keef, Lil Durk, King Von, Lil Reese, Fredo Santana, the list goes on and on. That Chicago drill rap was a huge movement when I was like probably 16. I was definitely in high school. It was everything. And it really changed the way rap is and how it is today. Lil Durk still probably bit back and better than he ever has been, is full-blown in mainstream media. Loses rapper King Von, who is very close, family to him, in fact, and 6 9 trolls him. Has a lookalike who the, the internet has deemed Perkyo, who looks just like Lil Durk, come on, using Steve Will Do It's name, come on to uh, Link and do some content where he puts a King Von jacket over him. A very disrespectful move in regard to Lil Durk, Chicago rappers as a whole. And King Von's family. So it caused a lot of beef there. You know, I can't blame them. Everyone's asking, who's this white dude who convinced this, this kid, this lookalike, to come up there and do some shit like that when it, it's only going to cause friction. It's only going to cause drama or riff in the, uh, the rap world. And so Steve's dealing with that currently. He has addressed it on the I Am Athlete podcast. I think those guys were pretty harsh on him, but I'm not going to speak on that. I understand they're doing it for the culture, and uh, they're doing it to really raise awareness, and it's something that I have to educate myself on. So I'm not going to speak on that, but let me know what you guys think, and let me know what you guys want to see next time. I told you it's going to be a quick episode. I got a lot out in like 20 minutes, so I'll see you guys next week. Don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the YouTube channel, guys. If you're watching this on Spotify only, it could be another month before you get an episode. Don't let that be the case. Check us out on YouTube, out on all major platforms, and don't forget, check out our sponsor, guys. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.